Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Miller. I am a thoracic surgeon and associate professor at the University of Kentucky. Today, we're going to talk about the management of nodal upstaging at the time of sublobar resection for non-small cell lung cancer. The overview of this talk, we are going to discuss the indications for sublobar resection in the setting of clinical stage one non-small cell lung cancer, as well as the surgical management of incidental nodal upstaging at the time of sublobar resection. Once this is found, we will also discuss options for adjuvant therapy in mutation-driven lung cancer. Recently, there has been interest in sublobar resections for clinical stage one non-small cell lung cancer. In particular, two studies have recently been published that have showed non-inferiority when compared to lobectomy. This is the results of CALGB140503, and this was published by Al Turki. And this was a study that looked at peripheral, less than two centimeter non-small cell lung cancers. And it showed that sublobar resection was non-inferior to lobectomy for these patients. As you can see listed, these patients on the right side underwent lymph node dissection that included a level 4R, 7, and 10. And on the left side, level 5 or 6 was harvested, as well as 7 and 10. And what you can see from the survival curves, as well as the table 2, it does show that sublobar resection was non-inferior to lobectomy. Interestingly, in the subgroup analysis, this group did not discuss what was done with patients who were found to have incidental nodal disease. The other trial that looked at this topic of sublobar resection was JCOG 0802. And this was a study that was published that compared lobectomy versus segmentectomy in small sized peripheral non small cell lung cancers. It was a multi center, uh, open label phase three clinical trial that showed non-inferiority. And interestingly, this group did discuss when incidental lymph nodes were found, and they found nodal involvement approximately 3% of the time in both the segmentectomy as well as lobectomy regroup. Uh, the statistics are listed there, and you can see that this was found both in incidentally found N1 and N2 lymph nodes. At the time of resection, if an incidental node was found, it did require proceeding with lobectomy at the time of frozen section. Some additional studies have recently been published that were based on National Cancer Database that we looked at patients with clinical T1N0 disease that were found to have pathologic N1 or N2 disease at the time of lobectomy or segmentectomy. This was a study published by Razi in the Journal of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery in 2020. And what this demonstrated was that there was no difference in overall survival in lobectomy or segmentectomy when patients were treated with adjuvant systemic therapy. Additionally, this is another study that was published in the Annals of Thoracic Surgery recently, and this demonstrated patients with occult node positive disease after segmentectomy for clinical T1 non-small cell lung cancer had limited isolated local regional recurrence and that those outcomes were similar to patients who underwent lobectomy. The conclusion of this trial uh, demonstrated that lobectomy may not provide a survival advantage in patients with occult nodal disease. Once the occult nodal disease has been discovered, whether it's at the time of sublobar resection or lobectomy, patients should be discussed in a multidisciplinary fashion for consideration of adjuvant therapy. Uh, included here in this slide are three of the most recent clinical trials looking at targeted therapy for mutation-driven lung cancer. Uh, the curves on the left are from the ADORA trial, which 
looked at osimertinib in the setting of EGFR positive resected non-small cell lung cancer. And what this showed was a survival advantage uh, pretty significant when compared to standard of care platinum based chemotherapy. They saw a disease free survival um, in the osimertinib group of 89%, and in the chemotherapy alone group, uh, survival of disease free survival of 52%. Additionally, the IM Power 010 trial uh, showed disease free survival benefit with. Atezolumab versus best supportive care after adjuvant chemotherapy in patients with resected stage two or stage 3A non-small cell lung cancer. This did show some pronounced benefit in the subgroup whose tumors expressed PDL1 uh, greater than 1%. There was significant improvement in disease-free survival in this group compared to best standard of care therapy uh, that was most pronounced in patients with greater than 50% PDL1. The most recent trial that was published was the ELENA trial, and this was a trial that looked at patients with resected ALK positive non-small cell lung cancer, and they looked at stages 1B, 2, and 3A. And in this study, there was a demonstrated significantly improved disease-free survival when compared to platinum-based chemotherapy. And you can see the survival curves here to the far right. So in conclusion, lobectomy should be performed if incidental nodal disease is discovered intraoperatively, if the patient is not high risk from a cardiopulmonary standpoint. If incidental nodal disease is found on final pathology, the patient may not necessarily need to undergo completion lobectomy as long as adjuvant therapy is offered. Lymph node dissection, regardless of sublobar resection or lobectomy, is of utmost importance and should follow the standards set forth by the Committee on Cancer for Lymph Node Staging. Adjuvant targeted treatment options do exist in resected not in resected non-small cell lung cancer in the setting of mutation-driven lung cancer. And as such, all resected specimens should undergo testing for targeted therapy.